Over the past few years, Escape from Tarkov has sunk into a rhythm of pushing out major updates that wipe the game every six months or so, and we are getting one of those major updates here towards the end of December. I want to talk about why I think this wipe will be different than a lot of the wipes that we've gotten recently, and why I think it will be one of the most influential wipes in Tarkov's history. Let's dive into it. While each Tarkov wipe undoubtedly includes the biggest updates of the year, players have kind of gotten used to those updates being features that are more layered on top of what we already have. Of course, there have been some pretty huge changes like inertia or the weight system, but huge game-changing mechanics like this are normally isolated and spread pretty far apart. Wipes have been mostly filled with new maps, new guns, new quests, some bug fixes maybe, and a few quality of life changes. That is where this wipe is different. On a recent podcast, Nikita went through most of the major features that are coming with this wipe, and there seems to be a staggering amount of features that could completely change how we interact with the game. And for the first time in a long time, we are getting features that are geared towards helping the new player experience, which could drastically help people's first impression of the game and keep people engaged longer. If I'm honest, some of these features make me a little nervous. Like I said, I think this will be one of the most influential wipes in Tarkov's history. Let's hope that is a good thing. But either way, I wanted to break down some of these features and talk about how they will change the way we play Tarkov. Let's start with the features that are going to change the game the most. And with that, we start with Recoil. Obviously, changing the entire system of how Recoil works in Tarkov is a huge deal. I'm not going to go too deep on the system that we have now and the different systems that we've had over the years, but suffice it to say that the last time they changed it, it was a huge deal and spoiler alert, not many people liked it. I feel like this change is shaping up to be another huge deal as well, but hopefully in a good way. It could fundamentally change how we handle firefights, how we use ammo, and so much more. It's important to mention here that when people say that we want the recoil changed, that does not just mean less recoil across the board and that everybody just wants laser beamy guns. Right now, almost all of the recoil is in the first few shots, making semi-auto and burst firing guns pretty useless, and the game rewards completely mag dumping all of your ammo because the gun progressively has less recoil over time as the auto compensation kicks in. This is very counterintuitive to how you think it would work in real life, and also completely the opposite of how most games handle recoil. We haven't seen much of the new system, but in the little that we have seen, it seems way more grounded and connected to the player, and the chaos that happens as you full auto a mag is kind of cool as well. It seems like it kind of flips the script. Less recoil initially, and more as you full auto. This really could have tons of effects on the game. If less bullets are getting shot in total, then maybe the perceived time to kill could go up. And also you might have more of a chance of escaping somebody who missed their initial shots at you and are just mag dumping you at this point. It's going to be a huge deal. And when they tweeted about putting the new recoil on the early test servers, it seemed like they are prioritizing build variety and are very eager to hear player feedback. And both of those things are good signs. The next major feature is vaulting. I think a lot of people are missing how impactful this could be. I was hesitant about this feature and it's practical until I saw the demo that they showed. Movement and the control we have over our characters is something I have thought needs a lot of work for a very long time, and vaulting is a huge step in the right direction in my opinion. They showed some incredible use cases for it in this video. A lot of times we are just jumping and hoping that we timed it right, or having to learn some really weird movements to duck into a window or crouch on windowsills. It just doesn't feel very intuitive or quick or fluid. But being able to vault out of a window or up a ledge on Lighthouse will be a huge change in our confidence and our ability to move around. Even if it costs stamina to vault, which I'm sure it will, if I can vault once and know that I'm getting up on a ledge instead of having to jump two, three, or four times, I think that is going to be a much better experience. It also could remove some of the reliance on this strength skill in a lot of cases. There are tons of railings or small things that you can't jump over initially with low strength. And not all of these are secret jump spots either. I'm just talking about like railings out there in the middle of the road that you need 30 strength to jump over. But the ability to seamlessly vault over them gives us so much more control over how we traverse. I will also be super interested in how this affects moving around the map when you're overweight, like will it cost more stamina to vault when you're heavy? We're not sure. In my opinion, the animation looks quick and there are tons of use cases for it. It might be jank at first and people might find some weird spots, but I think that this will change how we move around in the game. Another feature that will fundamentally change every single raid that we play is the armor rework. This is honestly hard to talk about since we still have so many questions on how this is going to play out and what changes they are making alongside this to smooth out the edges. I'm planning a deep dive video on what we know about this feature and why I'm worried about it, but nonetheless, it's coming and it's going to be a big deal. The TLDR is that armor plates are getting physicalized, which means armors could have multiple armor class plates in them, and you will be able to replace just specifically the ones that are damaged or broken. Alongside this is an update to how hitboxes work and potentially even adding more hitboxes to our character, and even changes to hit registration were mentioned in the roadmap as well. 
There are tons of ways that this system could change the game. Rounds that do a lot of flesh damage could become even more important since there will be more hitboxes and more places that armor doesn't cover. Broken armors can be more viable. If you get shot in the back right now and your armor gets crushed, you can't take any more shots anywhere. Your armor is gone. With the new system, you might have gotten shot in the back, but when you turn around to fight your enemy, all the plates on your front are still 100%. This could definitely change the course of that firefight. There will also be tons of economy implications as well. Will traders sell individual plates? Can I put any plate in any armor? Can I take a plate off of a dead PMC? Can I replace my plate in raid or just in my stash? Soft armor is also getting properly introduced as well, and this part of the armor seems irreplaceable, so this might determine when you want to change out your vest. Like I said, a lot of questions and it's hard to tell what the outcome will be. Will the time to kill get longer, shorter, will armors feel more or less important? Who knows? There's also mention on the roadmap of balancing changes to the mechanics of armor, damage, and movement. And those changes probably live alongside these armor changes to some degree. It's hard to tell what it's going to look like, but it will for sure be a huge deal. Another big feature coming is left shoulder shooting. This is another one that could greatly change how fights play out in Tarkov. It's got a ton of potential, but I also do think that this feature has a chance to kind of just become a novelty thing that nobody really uses. However, it was something that I was concerned about initially because I wasn't sure how they were going to handle the transition. I think they made a super smart decision making it a quick transition and not a full one where you would actually transfer both of your hands. If the animation was too long, nobody would use this in the middle of a fight. But because it's quick and we know we can ADS while doing it, it has at least potential to be something that is pretty frequently used. We still have to wait and see how strong it is compared to a right side peek, which right now is the most dominant way to play because of how much of your body you expose when peeking from the left side. This plus the poor netcode really does just reinforce that right side peak kind of stereotype in Tarkov. But even if it isn't 100% as strong as a right side peak, it could be greatly useful because sometimes you just can't peek from a right side. Sometimes you're backed into a corner or want to make a play from a left side really quickly. And if this is even remotely usable, I think it definitely could shake up fights. Now, let's talk about another huge change that will finally show some love to the new player experience, and that is Ground Zero. This is a new map that's being added to Tarkov, but it is not a normal map. This will only be for players that are below a specific level. They're still deciding if they want it to be level 15 or level 20, but it's going to be in that range. This will also be the map that we start on once the game is fully released and we have to unlock the maps one by one. Now, this could be huge for new Tarkov players. I know so many people that got out of this game just as quick as they got in. If you are new to the game, and especially if you are starting mid to late wipe, it can be an extremely frustrating experience to just be trying to learn the mechanics of the game and run into people that have been playing for five plus years and have all of the best gear. And it's a great way to do it, in my opinion, because all of the stakes are still there. You're still going to lose everything you bring in if you die in this mode. They didn't water down the experience. They just made it so that if you play this map, you are much more likely to run into people of your skill level. This map is located basically inside Streets of Tarkov in the lore, so it's going to look very similar to Streets. And as far as I understand it, you won't be forced to play this wipe if you are under that level threat. Threshold. So if you've been playing Tarkov for a while, you can pretty much ignore it if you want. I really, really hope that this creates a better experience for new players and allows those players to get hooked on the game and comfortable with the mechanics before they venture out to other maps. Now, those are the major features that have the biggest impact on how almost every single player will interact with the game, but this wipe offers so much more. There are a few other features that I'm really looking forward to, like the achievement system. They showed us a whole new system that honestly just looks really cool and includes a ton of achievements that you can work towards throughout your entire wipe. This change has me so excited and I think it has the potential to tackle multiple problems that Tarkov has. Firstly, having more things to do is a good thing in my opinion. Lots of people run out of fun in Escape from Tarkov and not just the no-lifers that play thousands of hours. I have talked to tons of casual players that just get to a certain level and have no desire to do any more of the tedious quests that they've already done a few times and they lose interest. I think giving people more optional content to do is always a good thing. You can ignore all the achievements if you like, you can go for the few that you think you can accomplish, or you can no life and try to complete them all. Secondly, it finally gives us at least a little bit of cross-wipe progression. Nikita said that these achievements will not be reset with wipes and that new ones will be added pretty frequently. This will finally add some meaning behind a task that you are trying to accomplish when you know that once you do it, you have unlocked that achievement forever. There's also tons of potential for other cool ideas here. Unlocking cosmetics like clothes or armbands through achievements would be a huge incentive to do more of them. And at one point, they even talked about a prestige system being added to Tarkov and how that would be tied into the achievement system as well. 
I am definitely very excited to see how this pans out. Another big feature we are getting is the BTR Taxi on Streets of Tarkov. It is definitely going to add some really interesting experience on streets since you'll be able to pay it to travel the map or provide backup for you. But the thing that I'm the most excited about is the ability to pay it to extract loot for you and stay in the raid. I am really hoping that this is kind of a test bed and that features like this will be added to every single map. This could be such a big deal. At the end of the day, we want to be playing the game and it just feels bad to spawn in, get into a fight and be overweight or find the one thing that you were looking for and then just immediately go towards the extract to leave and then just hop back in the queue and start it all over again. I know it will have its limitations since it's on streets and it's tied to this traveling BTR that other people can interact with, but I really hope that this is the start of a wider new feature. Additionally, we are getting a rework to Blindfire. Blindfire is currently one of those novelties I talked about earlier. It's cool, but it's not really practical at all in a fight. The angle is just weird and it always feels like you never really know where you're going to be shooting. In a video, they showed what this new feature kind of looks like and it looks much more intuitive and like a much sharper angle and I'm hoping that this turns into a useful mechanic. I also really hope that they let us move while blind firing again, please, please, Nikita. In addition to all of these features that we've talked about, we are also getting some of the standard things that we would expect from a new Tarkov wipe. We are getting a new boss, presumably Kaban's brother on Streets Tarkov. We are getting the Lightkeeper services where you'll be able to pay Lightkeeper to have a truce with the cultists or send Zarachi to support you. We are getting some new guns, a new preset system for how you load magazines, and even the ability to change the brightness of your reticles on your sights. All of those features are pretty cool, but I wanted to end this video by talking about some things that were delayed or are suspiciously missing from this podcast. The Streets expansion was delayed and we knew about that and they said that they wanted to work on optimizing Streets first before they expanded again. In my opinion, that is a very good thing. We need more people being able to play this map. The weapon bipods and mounting system was delayed. Uh, I was super looking forward to that, but with how much we're getting, that's totally fine that that had to get pushed. The two things, however, that were not mentioned on the podcast and aren't on the roadmap are changes to the audio or the netcode. Now, maybe one or both of these things are related to the new Unity update, which is another thing that got delayed. We will now be leapfrogging Unity 2021 and 2022 and be migrating to Unity 2023 at some point in the future. Uh, we postponed the Unity update and uh, we decided to move to 2023, Unity 2023, because it, it will be the best. Not like we will, we decided to avoid it 2021, and uh, due to several reasons like the performance issues and the different new bugs and everything that we, we just don't have time for that to fix it, fix, to fix it. And that's why we decided to make it next year. And we decided to move to Unity 2023 instead of 2021. I am very aware of how ignorant I am about game design and the technical aspect of all this, but I was definitely disappointed to not hear about any major progress being made with the audio or the netcode. All of these features are really, really cool, but in a shooter game, if you can't trust what you can see and can't trust what you can hear, it's always going to lead to very unfun experiences. Here's to hoping that we see some improvements to both of these with this wipe as well. Ultimately, it's going to be hard to tell how impactful this wipe will be. Obviously, it's going to depend on how well a lot of these features are implemented. A lot of these really could make or break people's interest in Tarkov. But I do think it's safe to say that this will be one of the most significant wipes in Tarkov's history. We have gotten used to wipes just being a few new features, new guns, maybe a new map, but not many things that change how we interact with the game. And coming off of the wipe we had in August, which was almost exclusively just fun quality of life stuff, I think people are really excited to get some new real changes to the game. Let me know what feature you are looking forward to most and maybe what feature you are most nervous about in the comments down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. If you like it, think about dropping a like or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov six days a week over on my Twitch channel and here on YouTube. Those links will be down below. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again so much for stopping by and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.